Hello, my astrology friends and family. This is Lada from astrolada.com with a topic which we haven't talked at all about, and I'm so fascinated that this week's guest, the incredible astrologer from Estonia, Ian Alfazar, is here to talk about this topic. And I've actually, interestingly enough, have been getting a lot of clients and people contacting me with sleep problems. And Ian has done an incredible research test for it. To explain to you more about it, about remedies to sleep according to your astrology chart, and I'm so excited. And he's offering a special reading on a promo if you have sleep problems, how to, if you want a personal reading with him for remedies for that based on the chart. Plus, he has created an incredible book which I loved so much. I enjoyed it. It's so beautiful. His Libra shines through it. It's full of pictures, suggestions, colors. Uh, decorations for your bedroom, but Ian, please go ahead. I'm very excited about this interesting topic. Thank you very much. First and foremost, for that introduction, amazing to hear. You know, um, it's it was one of the reasons why I even picked this topic was because um, I was, you know, first and foremost, it was my own suffering that was really, really getting to me. Was, you know basically making my heart really hard and, and you know waking up and not really sleeping and then the next day you're not really productive if you don't sleep that much so like what I usually do is I get into astrology when I when I have a problem like that and at that time that was like five years ago or something like that but that was a long time ago and one of the things that I was doing at that specific time I was going through actually your course your science course which I, I, I actually a houses and science at the same time and 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 I really recommend guys if you haven't uh, taken Lada's you know house course in those courses she goes through houses very specifically and I was going through the 12th house course and and today we're going to be focusing a lot on the 12th house because the 12th house actually um, rules sleep as well and I was going through that course and Lada was explaining like okay so 12th house rules sleep I was like Boof, you know because at that time I was like mm, I, you know I knew about the 12th house and but I didn't really grasp all the details of it and then I went obviously I have Virgo in the 12th house and I started looking for real practical remedies and that's that's how I really got into the let's say the the helping myself through it, and I want to want to really share a little bit of my screen as well with you guys to show you. Thank you for talking up my course. Of course, <laughs> guys. I <laughs> for me, like I really love Lada's courses, and I think I've said this on our videos that we've done together here on Asulada.com because you know you've been one of my main teachers, and and you know you know Victor as well, and other people as well. But you know I really started with you. Every you know it's it's weird to say, and I'm not saying just saying this to kind of like. Uh, up your ego but I literally started with you and, and uh, this is um, I really recommend those courses that are really good foundational courses when you need to get your astrology foundation um, solid let's let's put it that way thank you Ian. but what I love you do is that you take those little nuggets and you develop them into a whole project into a whole research <laughs> you know you you went in depth into all of this so I'm very excited uh, what you're going to present now hello hello and um, I just want to mention a couple more people obviously because um, at that time the very specific that when I was suffering with it myself I was obviously doing your courses but I was going into I saw it's very deep and you know the unfortunate the late Nicola who, who isn't with us anymore he did a very uh, profound work with the degrees and a lot of you who don't know it go search uh, on the internet there's a book he did on it and also there's a course on astrolada.com he did specifically a webinar that I really enjoyed and loved and in that webinar he talks a, a lot about the degree of, of, of the ascendant and he made the connection that also the degree of the ascendant um, gives the, and the indication of how you sleep as well so that was really really profound for me so I really went into the real world looked at my degree ascendant degree which is 18 degrees the worst degree possible in, in life but uh, let's let's leave, leave that but it's a Virgo degree again so I had a double Virgo influence so basically what I did 
was I really put that Virgo energy into into real life and practical solutions. I will later share what I did as well, and because that will be in the Virgo like sign part as well. So what I took a lot of, of what Lada shared, what Nicholas shared and took it into the streets and really it helped me a lot. And, and later on when I started to be, let's say a working astrologer, and started working with people, a lot of people, let's say came to me as well with sleep issues. You know, a lot of spiritual people have these sleep issues, not only spiritual people, but let's say very, very, uh, there's, there's issues, let's say for us on this planet with sleep. And um, now I had a lot of proof by that time, but it was still a little bit like I was getting frustrated with astrology. I, I have to be honest now it was I think it was even beginning of this year or you know somewhere around that time I was getting frustrated with astrology because in my mind we literally should approach it as a spiritual science as well but that the, let's say the earthly science part should be there as well. We need to get as much proof for these things that we say and have learned and have seen from the real world to, to in order for us to make astrology as mainstream as possible because if you're an astrologer you most likely want astrology to be as mainstream as and help as much people as possible and you know a lot of our world is very left brain so they don't want to hear these kind of higher truths or, or, or very very I don't know spiritual knowings or whatever so you need to get proof as well and, and I was frustrated and I literally went and get got normal people normal people from the streets and ask hey do, do you want me to look at your charts and do you want to get and, and test this work out in the real world and luckily a lot of people um, uh, obliged and uh, this is the work that I'm going to you know um, present to you right now from the real world tested in the real world with real people and uh, I'm really because it, it was really hard and uh, it was it was a lot of effort and work but uh, why I'm sharing this story with you guys and if you're especially if you're an astrologer get as much proof get as much real people to to give you feedback it will be the way for us to take uh, astrology into the mainstream so awesome uh, guys uh, okay so now that we know the back, I also need to understand the results and how to get results because what I've seen a lot in, in let's say because this book this even this presentation that I'm giving is, is packed with you know practical things for you to do and to go into the real world with but the problems I see with a lot of people is is maybe they do it for a week maybe they do it for two days maybe they do it for i don't know very short period of time and then something happens maybe life happens something big happens and then you know oh it doesn't work this doesn't work it's bullshit you know etc etc but i really urge you to you know use the way of the saturn here because you know in or let's say solving these problems we need to put in the actual effort and this is where we need to use the Saturnian energy of repetition constant repetition repetition so anything you hear in this presentation or if you decide to get the book there's even more information take action with it and the minimum abs the absolute minimum should be 30 days but I do recommend even 90 if you have a lot of retrograde planets in your chart I would recommend even more minimum of 90 days now why am I sh yeah I go ahead something mm -hmm. that's a very of course. interesting insight you think people with more retrograde planets they they take longer to create a new habit because they're more entrenched into all their habits I've seen that connection yes oh, uh, obviously it yeah so much sense because I have five retrograde plants <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a very emotional type and a woman like the ones you give below <laughs> so I have so much difficulty seeing results first of new habits and following through <laughs> so that's uh, so correct <laughs> I'll give you a little bit of a harsh truth that I've seen throughout my life and now as a, as a working I'm, I'm an astrologer but I'm a, I call myself a spiritual therapist as well because I counsel people with with an emotional issues all sorts of issues life things everything basically is what I see with women is women the importance you like you said is emotional and women like to talk about it and they feel good when they get to share especially with their best friend somebody they trust it feels amazing feels good it feels like they they like solve something 
But now, you know, afterwards, the, the kind of like the masculine part comes in as well, needing to take action, needing to, you know, persevere, be vigilant, be, you know, these types of more, let's say, masculine traits. And I see, unfortunately, women struggle with that part more. So if you're a woman, you know, I'm not saying you need to be a man constantly, you know, be, you know, <laughs> like an Aries all the time. I'm not saying Aries, you know, but like the point I'm making is, uh, use both of these worlds, use both of these energies, use your feminine side to share and feel and, and, and get through that the emotional stuff and then later on start taking action and use, use the Mars and use the Saturn to actually get results as well. And I, I, the reason I'm sharing this, and I'm quite Saturnian, because, you know, if you haven't um, discovered your chart Almuten, I, I suggest you, again, this is your, uh, one of your courses, <laughs> Lada, this is, uh, I think it is your, what was, uh, Aspects course, I think in, in your Aspects course, another amazing course by Lada, and, and uh, in that course, she really uh, dissects the Almuten, and my chart Almuten is Saturn, and I'm a very kind of like I would say a Saturnian person who is very uh, vigilant with routines, and sometimes even <laughs> too much and again can it can get into extremes. But 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 why am I saying this again? Is it's really important the first 30 90 days these are the really important parts because if you give up there then you're like oh it doesn't work oh it, you know, blah 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 the mind goes into uh, justifications and judgments but if you keep up with it the body gets used to it and this is one of the really really big important parts about this sleep um, part the body starts to get used to these things that you're doing it's as if you are doing the thing and let's say in a little while you're going to bed, that gives a signal to your brain, to your body that, oh, the person is doing this. Okay, it must be the time for me to go to bed. Very simple, but very, very hard to do. And I've seen people struggle. So please give yourself the time as well. And especially if you're in a difficult situation as well, like, like you know, like, even like, like, like having a baby, you know, I just had a baby, you know, <laughs> there are ups and downs and you know, a lot of maybe can share some, some of those stories as well. <laughs> I was just beginning to myself because I was thinking, what should someone with Scorpio in the 12th house do before sleep to program themselves? <laughs> Well, we'll we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> oh, that's a pretty intense one, uh, definitely. And what if they program it and every time they start doing sex, they fall asleep after that? <laughs> that's that's a good point. And 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 sex is a part, obviously, sometimes. But like, I do. If if you start to use sex, I would be really careful, uh, especially with releasing uh, energy as well. Uh, let's say ejaculation for men and clitoral orgasms for women. Uh, these are things that release energy. Um, and, and at first it can mean, mean it's, it's almost like an addiction, I would say. And it can at first help you, especially if you're in a really deep, you know, hard place with insomnia, etc., etc. It can help you. But I do suggest you dial that one down uh, once you've got a, at least, you know, getting six hours, getting seven hours already or getting some sleep at, at least and then transitioning into something more healthier. So, uh, you know, even like, you know, if you were talking about masturbation and, and, and sexual intercourse, even if you have sex and you don't ejaculate, if you don't have a clitoral orgasm, if you have deeper orgasm, it, that can also, you know, help you sleep as well, but it preserves the energy within the body. Okay, so That's a little bit porn. of... We've heard about it, but no women experience it. <laughs> the other time. <laughs> Luckily, I personally have proof that it, these things exist. <laughs> so, but, but uh, like, we're getting a little off topic here, but like, uh, for, but uh, no, no, no. It's, it, I think it's an extremely important uh, topic, sexuality, and I can, I can share a few words about this. Is, is literally like, it takes time sometimes and i think the tantric practice if used properly if used in a balanced way the tantric practice offers a lot of deep experiences both men and women please guys remember men can have full body orgasms as well so here i can literally be proof i've had full body orgasms these things exist these aren't for men these aren't uh, you know unicorns like <laughs> And, and I've seen, and I've, luckily I've had the, the privilege of, of being with, with uh, women as well, 
when they experience this. But again, it takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of time. It takes to get to know one another. It takes intimacy. It takes, it takes unfortunately, for, for men as well. Um, I'll, give you, I'll give you a little bit of a small lecture uh, in, in, in tantric sexology. Let's say I'm, I'm, I have some, I've done courses, etc. But like women hold a lot of tension in their um, uterus, in their vagina, in their uh, sexual points, the, the G spot, the, the U spot, the A spot. There are many spots there, and we, uh, unfortunately, a lot of pain, emotion uh, in the womb as well. A lot of pain and emotion gets stuck there. So this is one of the reasons um, women sometimes have to experience a little tiny bit of pain to release that um, during, let's say, tantric massage and etc. Do be in order to be opened um, to these deeper sexual experiences of uh, uh, deeper orgasms, you know, um, uh, vaginal orgasms and womb orgasms even, and 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 wild. That that world is wild, and I'm not saying it's only for pleasure. This is the one of the things that I, it's really important to understand about tantra. It's, it's not only about pleasure. It's a lot about healing and releasing those pains and traumas because there's so much of uh, this is again you know, coming from a lot of personal experience there's so much stored there and I've seen people like shaking and, and they're crying and you know everything is, is releasing there's unfortunately there's you know sexual trauma um, you know people who have been abused there that gets stored there and there's a lot there and for men unfortunately men store it you know very a lot of that pain and, and, and um, emotion into the anus so it does, it does need to be, let's say at first, it does need to be massaged gradually to be opened up for, for you or, or as the man to be opened up sexually as well. And at first, unfortunately, there is a little bit, tiny bit of pain there as well. Yeah, and... Um, Maybe we should do another video of those things. <laughs> I think we should, probably. Don't, say, don't ban this video, I'm going to go get charged, but... Start yeah. the let's go let's go guys uh, deeply into this as well and let's 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 explain some of the logic behind the sleep thing let's get into let's re-gear ourselves into the sleep part of the, the presentation and, and the work that we're doing here now as i said sleep is represented by the 12th house nicola made the association that also the ascended degree is to do with the sleep so these both influences add to our sleep or how we sleep, you can look at those things. Now, um, and I want to just mention a little bit because I'm preparing the, the volume two of this book as well, the Astrologer's Guidebook. It's, it will be more astrology, um, let's say, um, focused or, or more of an astrology focus there, or astrologer focus, let's put it that way. And in that, I will go into more of the very nitty gritty details of astrology. But this one is, is for, for those who have problems and they don't maybe know so much about astrology yet, and they can use it immediately and take it and put it into action. But a little bit about like what's the logic behind and how to interact with the material and how to interact with the book as well. And uh, when we're talking about, let's say in this example, you can you can see uh, uh, the ascendant is on first on the first degree, which is the Aries degree. This gives us already the indication that this person is during their sleep is influenced by the Aries energy. Now, when we're talking about in the book, the the, the, the sections are dissected. Uh, like like from the 12th house so meaning here you can also see that the ascendant is in Taurus that me all you know most likely always means that the 12th house is ruled by the sign of Aries or the 12th house is in Aries so in the book that section or the Aries section if you have an Aries degree is under the Taurus section Please remember that so you can use that section to really go and you can use that with other degrees as well and uh, let's go move forward and give you another example. You can see here, you know, that the ascendant is in the sign of Gemini. Very simple, very simple stuff. And that means the 12th house is, by whole sign, is in the sign of Taurus. Now, go look at the Gemini section in the book and in this video to, for clues to what to do and how to sleep better if you have problems. 
and uh, put put it put the combo to use you know you can also use from the sun and from the moon here's a good example also on this this example that i have on the screen you have the moon also in gemini so there's a lot of you know gemini influence means again the 12th house taurus influences the person a lot during their sleep and uh, you know when we're looking at the sun you know i'll give you a sun except oops i clicked it uh, when we're looking at the sun, you know, from the sun, maybe your sun is in Leo, for example. That means by whole sign, your 12th house is in the sign of Cancer. Look at, look at the Leo, side, uh, Leo section of this presentation and look at the Leo section in the book. Uh, so hopefully this is uh, understandable. If not, please leave a comment. Uh, I will explain definitely. Now let's get into the thick of it. When we're talking about now Aries, Aries is a uh, you know you, Aries is quite feisty. They have the, the Pisces in the twelfth house, and and here I brought an like I, I, in the science I brought the main things that really got the best results and really let's say influenced the people in a, in a positive way and and, and you know for, we were talking about Aries you know. Pisces 12th house, usually, you know, it could mean that, you know, the natural house of Pisces, Pisces is in the natural house, it's of itself, so no problems there, but I've seen a lot of Aries people struggle with sleep because also Pisces dissolves sleep sometimes, and obviously Aries itself has a lot of energy within them, they're, they're always doing something, they, they need to move, they need to do something physical also during the day, so if you have... Aries, Sun, Moon, Ascendant degree, these are some of the things you can do. Kickboxing, martial arts during the day. Now, I would be a little bit careful to put it close to the, to the sleep time or very, very close to the pre-sleep routine, but it's still a good time, uh, let's say, to do it. If it starts to, let's say, um, Let's, let's say it becomes too intense for you before sleep, you know, put the time a little bit further away from the actual sleep, maybe do it during the day. But the actual physical exercise is really important for this, uh, this combo, especially if you have Aries degree, uh, first or 13th or 25th uh, is also Aries degrees. So, these are uh, the first thing always physical things for you to do now let's bring in the pisces as well prayer routine before bed and already in bed this works extremely well but like one of the reasons where i see people struggle with this is is they, they do a prayer and like oh i'm not sleeping this that this means that it doesn't work but again remember the saturnian influence put the effort in do more prayers do a little bit more uh, do three, do, let's be constantly in prayer. When I first started myself, I was literally, I was, you know, praying a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, literally. And, and I prayed until I literally my, my eyes closed and I started sleeping. And this has worked well as well. The, the next one, the last one for the Aries, you know, because Pisces rules feet, remember guys, and, 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 and water is, is very closely associated with Pisces as well. We're talking about foot massage and foot baths before bed as well. And these can even be done in bed. You know, you can integrate this into your uh, pre-sleep routine. Massage them, put them in baths, you know, maybe put some salts that, you know, um, don't stimulate you or, or you know, ground you a little bit more and uh, do it before bed you know and then get ready and go directly into bed remember that um, let's say the body and the brain start to remember um, part as well now let's go into the taurus so taurus is an interesting one because tauruses themselves you know are quite grounded they're earthly usually but they have the aries that we just talked about in the 12th house as well so this is an interesting one and um when we're talking about the aries energy in the 12th house it likes spurts so taking shorter naps during the day will help as well because very often because the aries energy in the 12th house that the ambition and the, the the drive comes out in these behind the scenes places you know it is it's it's it's, it's a little bit easier to take small naps during the day kind of build up that sleep 
And then, you know, maybe, at, at no, yeah, go ahead. That's my mom, mm -hmm. in Torrance, and she has huge sleep problems. And that's what she does. She takes naps during the day. She, that's the only thing that works for her. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, just wanted to give an example. I really like that example. Uh, thank you a lot. And uh, guys, you can see like, you know, sometimes, you know, you're in a situation, maybe where your corporate job or whatever, you can't really do it. But, you know, still can somehow weave these things into your day, maybe take a nap afternoon, maybe go into your car, maybe, you know, do lunchtime, you know, you can just start putting these things and literally 15, 20, 30 minutes here and there, it really builds up. And it real, really helps a person um, to, to, let's say, feel rested and, and sleep at least a little bit. Because I know, I know a person personally who literally had, a, I think he, he did a year with only one hour of sleep. So each day, so he, he managed to do that. He, and he, he had some business things he wanted to take care of. And he had a lot of pressures and, and a lot of, he needed a lot of time basically. And literally helped uh him and you can you he literally managed to to deal with these things with only one hour of sleep i'm not recommending it for a long time but you know you can see it, it uh the body is capable of a lot now these uh also we're going to be bringing in jigong and tai chi like this is like again similar to martial arts but it's you know if you've ever done jigong or uh, tai chi it's slower it uh, grounds you a lot. It, it slows you down, actually. It, it grounds your energy as well. And in this, again, movement, remember Aries in the 12th house, it's a little bit to do with the movement, physical movement. You're moving your hands, you're moving your feet, you're moving your body. Really, really good. And now, to ground your, let's say, that the Aries fierceness, we're, we're bringing a red lead uh, nightlap into the bedroom. Don't make it too, if, if you're bringing that redness as a Taurus into your um, bedroom, don't make it too bright because too, too bright can, can stimulate, make it dimmer, make it dimmer and, and make it a little bit darker. But again, the red light will actually uh, ground that energy. Now, Gemini, uh, Ascendant Sun, Moon or Ascendant Degree, uh, this is, we have the Taurus. In the 12th house for the Gemini's and and usually you know the, the, there is let's say a little bit less problems depending on you know there can be some other influence maybe you have a planet there etc etc that will bother you but literally less a little bit less problems let's say usually and and I got that from the testing um, let's say the testing people <laughs> that gave me their information as well uh, a little bit less um, problems there before bed, going, going literally and, and taking a walk in nature, putting your feet in the ground, if you're able to. Obviously, sometimes it's cold, sometimes it's winter, we can't really do that. But even taking a walk in nature itself, you know, maybe there's a park close to your, where you live. Maybe, you know, you're lucky and you're living in nature. Maybe you're living in the countryside. Maybe you're living, you know, some sort of bushes something is there that you can go and take a walk in amazing 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 and really helps but this is especially with these types of routines it's really important that you keep up with and hard to do you know every day because you know sometimes you need to do something somebody comes in blah 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 you know that will come in you have to come and and let's say jump back on the the horse again now everything in the bedroom itself, because we're talking about Taurus, it should be very good quality. Um, nothing too cheapish there. It needs to be, um, you know, I would, I would personally go minimalistic, a little bit minimalistic, because Taurus is a little bit hoarders. You know, twelve house Gemini can be hoarders, and they're hoarding their twelve house and they're hoarding their bedrooms. Uh, but you know, keep that dialed down. Uh, keep that. You know good, good quality um, items there you know maybe art maybe maybe these types of things like I said images paintings of nature itself and you know you can put a night element to to the to the actual painting as well because the night is darker and it helps to to ground again it helps to sleep better 
And, uh, but it has to be good quality, beautiful, enjoyable, all of these things that Tauruses do. Like, for example, even like the bed spread, the, the towel, uh, not towels, the, the, the blankets, these should be good quality. You know, these should be um, things that you personally feel that are, are really good to you. You know, no, don't cheap out on this, uh, this part. Uh, okay, so let's move for, forwards. Now, cancers, <clears throat> cancers, uh, this one is a little bit tricky, I would say, for cancers. Because cancers have Gemini, you know, you have Gemini in the 12th house, and it is a bit of a difficult one. Because Gemini likes to think, likes to talk, likes to communicate, likes to write, likes to be here and there, and, and is very, very, I would say, here and there type of a sign. Lots of energy, in a way, running through them as well. What can you do? Like writing, diary, journaling, this should be part of the pre-sleep routine, but it also should be, you know, uh, next to your bed. Now, there is a debate. I'm, I'm more of keep your phone on airplane mode, which is better. Then you don't have to disturb and turn on the light and start writing. You know, for example, if you have a baby, if you have a, you know, if you have a family member there, you don't have to turn on the light. You can get, keep the phone dimmed in airplane mode, write everything down, all the thoughts, all the ideas, etc. down. I think that's a little bit easier, but it can be a physical diary journaling exercise as well. And actually do that if you wake up in the middle of the night, information coming, dreams coming, everything, you know, coming thoughts, ideas, again, write these down, really get these out. Because if you don't do that, literally, it will st still keep repeating, repeating, repeating. Audio notes, again, before bed, the mind starts running, maybe you're already in bed, record it, talk it out, communicate it out. Better than to just constantly keep keep uh, going there. Now, a walk, really good during bedtime or before bedtime. Again, before bedtime routine, before actually jumping into that. Uh, and this time, you know, you know, if we're talking about Gemini, obviously the nature is still good if you can do it. But, you know, if you're living in the city, there's no parks, etc. Even a walk in the, in the, in the city is a lot better than just you know laying there and not really um, just letting your mind run and it's, it's a little bit of a thing that will get it will keep repeating and repeating and repeating if you don't do anything and uh, obviously if you can do it uh, during the middle of the night go again walk 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 you can do it in your bedroom if you're alone just walk 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 right 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 you get all the ideas, ideas, the communication, everything gets out, then go back to bed. Uh, yeah, I think this was one of the combination that was really repeating and people were struggling with this. Now, the Leos. Leos uh, have uh, cancers in, uh, or cancer in the 12th house. So again, a little bit of a cyclical thing going on. Remember guys, Cancer is a very cyclical uh, sign. So when you have it in the 12th house, it goes like a sinusoid. It goes up and down, you know, you maybe have a very, very, a period where you're sleeping fine and maybe a lot even. And then you have a period of not sleeping that much. And that means again, like I said, for, um, for the, the Tauruses, it needs sometimes, you know, taking naps before or taking naps during the day even. But what are some of the other things you can do with this cancer energy in your 12th house is shower routine, shower routine with prayers before bed, even using salts. Now, this really helped the people here or our people in the test group and, and a lot of people. And it maybe, you know, maybe if you're a little bit more left brainish, the prayers, you know, keep the prayers out. Uh, but like the shower routine, take a shower each day before you go to bed. Very simple, but you have to remember it and have to do it. Put the salts in, uh, adds more. Now, an interesting one here is a bed canopy for safety and privacy. This, this one is... Like when we're talking about cancer, we're talking about the need for safety and privacy. A little bit similar to obviously Scorpio, um, but uh, Scorpio wants more privacy, uh, cancer wants more nurturing and safety, but 
the canopy works in both of these situation, situations. So use that one as well and make it something that you feel nurturing. In. You know, it's better obviously with cancer if it's whitish, the color whitish, or, and, and you know, that will bring even more of that cancerian um, energy there. And a very simple one, one I really like is, is the painting or image or something to do with the moon in the bedroom. Again, you know, plays to the Cancerian um, energy and dials it down, you know, the cyclical and, oh, I can't, now I'm up, oh, yeah. So, and I think I want to mention here for the Leos, if something is off emotionally in your life or let's say, with your family members, especially cancer, it will, you know, again, like literally, what's the word I'm looking for here? It will, uh, <laughs> it will, it will literally frustrate you in your sleep so, so much that, you know, it, it will be hard to get to bed or, or sleep. You have to take care of the actual issue that is, is going on maybe here with your family members. So, Remember that as well, Leos. Uh, but like simple, easy, or simple uh, things to do, but you have to keep up with these. Now the Virgo ascended sun or moon. Now you guys have an interesting one as well. I think the last ones have been quite um, difficult even I would say. Because when we're talking about Leo in the 12th house, it, it's a bit of a um, fiery sign, remember. When we're talking about fire, it's still to do with energy. Okay, this one is a little bit fixed, so it's a, maybe a little bit easier, but still, it's it's a fiery, warm sign. Um, and I really found hard actually to to uh, give good things for the for the Virgos to do. But here are some of the things that worked uh, better. Now we're talking about Leo. We're talking about the heart, and we're talking about orange color. We're talking about yellowish colors, oranges colors colors and you can put heart shaped things in the bedroom but I, I do like combining these things and taking literally the pillows the pillows could be even like the, the ones that you keep on the bed that you don't sleep with even these can be heart shaped and yellowish types um, now this is this is the important part I think the most important part for Virgos because Leo is some place or something we're really the best at. We, we want to be best at. We, we, it's enjoyable for us. We, it's fun for us. And make this, make the bedroom, the best bedroom that you can actually make. And you personally, you, you, you watch it with your, you know, quite um, um, vigilant Virgo eyes and you're looking at the bedroom and you're seeing, okay, so this is the best bedroom I can possibly, you know, Make, make it your kingdom uh, and, and you feel like a king there or a, a queen there literally this will help you as well uh, now this pre-sleep routine uh, I do like the pre-sleep routine in every for every sign and in this case for the Leos or sorry for the Virgos who have Leo in the 12th house it should be done autonomously because Leo is a very autonomous so you don't really want to be doing you know uh, brushing your teeth with everybody else. You you do your brushing of the teeth you, alone. You make you make the routine uh, the best as well. And uh, I think you can also add you know these colors. Obviously, Leo colors, oranges, yellowish colors into your better. But if they're too bright, again, it can be uh, a little bit uh, stimulating, too overstimulating. And I I I I, I very much like for the Virgos to add, uh, uh, let's say, a night jungle or a night desert, a night desert where the lions, you know, feel at home and a lion there, you know, with, with that image or with the art piece there as well. It, it really, you know, brings that Leo energy into the bedroom. Now, Libras, so, you know, I mentioned uh, my personal struggles with this uh, thing as well. And, and um, I have the Virgo in the 12th, so I, I personally know a lot of Libra people who 
literally during their sleep and, and, and uh, bedroom time, they worry about the next day, just work constant worry about, oh, I'm go- oh my God, I have to do this, I have to do this to do this, there's so much work to do, all of these kinds of work, or everyday things, work things, to-do list, organizing things, all of these things really came to play with myself and others as well. So I really like to use the positive side of every sign, as you can see, we're bringing in the good side of, of the signs and, and what is the good side of, of Virgo is organizing. I literally you know, start to use that uh, sleep app to organize. Airplay mode, you can do that, but the sleep app literally tells you, okay, so now it's time for you to start your wind down, start your pre-sleep routine. Again, you need to keep up with it because Virgo is routines and it, it, re- it reminds you, gives noti- notifications and um, you know use it guys it's very very simple very hard to do but very simple uh, cleansing and purification ritual before bed i really like this one uh, it, it's you can get yourself clean you can see you can do it practically take a shower wash yourself you know water purifying in the water or you can do it you know energetically meditation you know ground yourself uh, clear everything you know there are many meditations you can use here you can do your personal meditation you know to, to clear the energy I, I you know send every all energy back to 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 other people in, in the best way you know very simple these types of words you can use but you have to do it you have to do it every day uh, and you can combine obviously you can put the water in you can put uh, you can put uh, the meditation together as well yeah go ahead Oh, uh, oh, oh yeah. my husband is Libra ascendant as well, and he has problems sleeping. And he started researching, which is very Virgo thing to do about. Oh, of course. Sleep, and how if you if your sleep is interrupted after less than ninety minutes or whatever, some circadian cycle or whatever. So he started on a nap, making sure that it only from the moment he falls asleep that it will only wake him up when such cycle is complete. <laughs> so I'm like, this is very scientific and precise but he's noticed that certain cycles you wake up you feel way more tired other cycles you wake up you slept only two hours and you're way more you know so if some of your liberal research that and do it exactly like ian said like uh... <laughs> i really like that actually i really like uh, what what your husband did and i think that's a that's an extremely well used virgo energy in practice, in practical life, in, in worth of earthly life. So use that as well and, and, you know, organize that, you know, that is organizing, that is Virgo. Uh, now, one of the, one of the things that really I like with the Virgo energy here is, uh, is a sacrificing place to the universe. Now, if you have God, whatever there, something else, do that for, for, for it. The point is here to use the Virgo energy to sacrifice Sacrifice. It's a very sacrificing sign, actually. It's in your 12th house, Libras, guys. And the point is here to give something up for in order to get sleep. So maybe it's an addiction. Maybe it's an imbalance. Maybe it's some sort of thing that you actually are doing before bed. Maybe you're too long, you know, on your apps and, and doing other things, you know, maybe Facebook or social media, whatever it is that you do before bed. This is the time to actually, it's like, make an intention, I will sacrifice this, I will give up this in order for, for me to sleep better. You can always put, you know, a precise time. Maybe you have a, you know, you're sleeping only five hours, but you would like to sleep seven or eight hours, which is in my mind the, the optimized kind of cycle. Uh, do that, add that as well, and, and it, it will start to get better gradually if you keep up with the routines. I think uh, these are these are my favorite ones. Also, maybe something from my husband as a liberal rising. He went huge into researching herbs for helping him sleep, which is again very Virgo thing to do. So he uses some kind of powder that are all natural, and he concocts me and him every night some kind of like a health cocktail that uh, with passion flower with. Uh, drops from uh, chamomile and such kind of he's like a drugstore at home that he makes some concoction and you sleep like <laughs> like a stone that's amazing that's a, that's an amazing way to use the verbal energy i would say guys uh, use that as well 
And and uh, you know, uh, one thing I wanted to say for kind of like all the science is like take bits and pieces here and there. Take from the book. Take from this video. Take what Lada said, and and start to see what works. Give it thirty days. You know, give it a little bit more, and then you know, combine and weave, and you will get to the right for you the right thing as well. It'll allow it a little bit of time. Now, the Scorpio, <laughs> the Scorpio ascendant sun or moon uh, ascendant degree, you have the the. <laughs> you have the Sagittarius in the 12th house. So it's again a fiery sign, more energy, you know, mutable oh, energy no, no. as well. They have oh, sorry, 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 they have Libras. <laughs> sorry, I went, I went all, oh, um, I went to the next one already or a little bit further away. Sorry, guys, Scorpio has uh, Libra in the 12th house, which is actually an air sign and which is a little bit of a, I would say, a little bit of a um, easier sign to actually navigate in, in your bedroom. Now, in the bedroom, when you have Libra there, things should be very designerish. Uh, what I mean by this is Libra likes good quality things. They like beautiful things. We can say pillows, we can say blankets, but you can say all the furniture there, even the bed, even like the colors in the bedroom. They need to be good quality, designer made, or, or even designer, maybe you can get a designer if you have the funds to, to make it beautiful. This is really important to have uh, for the Scorpios in the 12th house. Now, harmony. When we're talking about Libra energy, the harmony is always uh, important. If there's something out of balance in the bedroom itself, you need to put it order. Maybe there's too many pillows. Maybe there's you know too many things there. Maybe there's there's something off, and you kind of see you know one scale being off. You need to really uh, put it into order and, and balancing. This is all about what the Libra is. It's about balancing that sleep. And and even if we're talking about like sleep routines. Nothing can be too extreme uh, here because remember Scorpios, you you know you tend to go into extremes at times. It's important to really uh, find at least for the sleep routine in the bedroom, find that balance and harmony. Keep that in mind, please, guys. Now, when we're talking about uh, again Libras, we want to bring in elements. Of, of Libras. We're not talking about beauty, art, we're talking about quality design, like I said, but you can also in your better um, pre sleep routine, you can look at, let's say, architecture, you can uh, look at videos of architecture. I prefer books because then the technology is not there. So if you have like something beautiful in those books, and that will start to again. Um, Tell your body, tell your brain, okay, so this person is, is looking at these things. Okay, it's time to, to go uh, to bed. And um, yeah, remember the balance and good quality items here. I can, I can nod again. <laughs> Sorry, go, my go, son go. is Scorpio rising. Yeah. So his slipper is a 12th house, and I never thought of that, but he's got the most beautiful bedroom in our house <laughs> it's, it's a design the only design of bed in the whole house i put it in his bedroom without even realizing and his house his bedroom is full of paintings original paintings from painters and he refuses he doesn't like to sleep in a, a bedroom without paintings and their paintings interesting enough boys and girls holding hands very libra <laughs> relationship yeah so this, wow, this is crazy. <laughs> this guy, I'm really happy that Lara brought this in because this, this is really, uh, you know, this is kind of like astrology, how it works in, in, in the real life. And, and uh, we need to use it. Uh, we need to do it. We need to use it. So guys, do it. If, let's say if you're a Scorpio, you know, um, start bringing in these elements and start bringing in these uh, uh, designer things and, and even art. Now, Sagittarius, <laughs> I don't know how I made that. I was like going so deep into it, but like uh, Sagittarius, now we're talking about Sagittarius ascendant sun or moon or ascendant degree as well. You guys have Scorpio in the 12th house. Now, <laughs> we talked about a lot about sex and sexual intercourse and, and it's, it is to do a lot with, with um, Scorpio energy. So if, if, you're, if you're using that as well, you know, 
look at the beginning of the video where we're talking about the usage, usage of sexual energy. It's, it's important to preserve it, it's important to use it properly. Um, and um, yeah, Godspeed with that. But what are some other things you can do in this uh, situation when you have a Scorpio in the 12th house? Is darker colors in the bedroom so we want something that is again dimming like dimming curtains nothing too bright it's it's like a you know these these pillows blankets cases you know pajamas even you can use pajamas there darker black even like something dimmed uh in the in the whole kind of like environment of the bedroom should be like this private thing which is a lot to, if you have dimming curtains and it does feel more more of a private thing and, and and the bedroom should be private to you and only let in people you trust because you know this is extremely important for the scorpio energy that you do that and you know you can always energetically clear if you feel like something or someone or something has been there you can obviously energetically clear and 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 you know use sage and stuff like that to get it cleared out as well now the the more extreme one is privacy here you know we can use that in the cancer cancer part of this uh, presentation as well because i had a lot of people um who had a lot of let's say safety issues uh in the test group as well and, and one of the things we concocted and, and uh, it was to use a separate lock on the bedroom door and uh, you know it's a pretty extreme thing as you can see and and you know extreme cases but if you have literally a fear a fear of, of i don't feel safe here you know and one of the reasons i can't sleep is that i don't feel safe you need to do basically anything you can feel safe so this is just one way you can add an extra layer of, of safety uh, obviously don't the key needs to be yours and uh, yours alone or people you very very deeply trust now uh, the next thing is also adding some scorpionic elements into it these are images of the desert you know middle east snake ornaments i would do it again night is always better uh, something darker is always better, especially in, in this in this case a Scorpio, like like a, a darker snake, a darker image of a desert, a night desert. Uh, it can be it's it's still more grounding. It doesn't put too much brightness into the bedroom. So use that as well and bring in those elements. You know, it can even be a Scorpio as well. It can literally be a Scorpionic uh, ornament as well to bring uh, into the room uh, as well. Okay, now okay, yeah, I go ahead. Know again, my story of from course. my daughter is Sagittarius rising. Mm -hmm. She literally hates anyone else to go into her bedroom. <laughs> she takes a key, she's four years old, and so her brother will not get in, she locks herself in. She she hates it when he, it's something about the privacy in her bedroom, just me and her dad. And then right above her bed, there is a painting that I put, but I didn't know that. It's like <laughs> it blows me away that people subconsciously do those things. Yeah. Yeah. I put a painting of three white witches in white robes, so it's nice. not witches, but uh, like um, uh, mm, uh, sh shamans, shaman. Mm. That is very occult. Scorpion. They're dancing under the moonlight, holding hands. So that's very scorpionic imagery again. Shaman or exactly. Or, so that it's it goes in her bedroom. Is always with blackout curtains. <laughs> Pulls them all. It's <laughs> fantastic. I just absolutely love your observations. Okay, this is this is why I really love astrology because in a lot of times or a lot of times we do that subconsciously. We don't even know sometimes we don't even know astrology. And people who don't know astrology do it subconsciously. But this is this let's say this work is for people who, who are struggling and maybe they haven't yet figured out or maybe have they haven't done it yet subconsciously. Or maybe you have done some and now you can add extra pieces and, and, and extra layers uh, to this as well. Okay, so I'm amazing to hear. I, I really love these kind of like earthly material stories from real life because I think this is what astrology is and this is what it should be uh, in a lot of ways as well. Okay, now now the Capricorn Ascendant Sun and Moor degree. Who has uh, the Sagittarius in the 12th? I still can't believe I went into straight into that. But it happens, uh, guys. But okay, let's, let's talk about the Sagittarius. It's a fire sign. There is a lot of uh, fiery energy, mutable energy there. 
But how can we use it in our uh, sleep routines and, and uh, bedroom? Now, I really like when we're talking about uh, such energy, we're talking about guided meditation, we're talking about meditation, we're talking about higher connection to, uh, let's say, the, the sleep or co higher connection to other realities, these types of things. I really like if you integrated some sort of prayer routine, some sort of meditation routine, some sort of that type of routine, spirit, spiritual routine into your... I know for Capricorns, obviously, very a lot of Capricorns are in, in the earthly realm so strongly, but when you are, let's say, in your sleep, in your bedroom, this is the time, this is the place where you actually can uh, use meditation as well. Now, sacred figures, ornaments in the bedroom. Uh, I, I put Buddha statue here, Buddha name here because um, this one I've actually used personally helps tremendously. It is obviously better if it's something or someone or the figure is something that you feel really connected to. It helps a little bit obviously to, to have it there and <laughs> it's enjoyable for you. But like it really does help. It kind of like grounds the energy and soothes you and, and even better if you can look at it a little bit. You know, if, if it's you know bright and gold, I would put it there, but it is shining. But if it's like a little bit dimmed, you know, I had one or we have one that is kind of like a bluish type of color. And I really love that one. And really soothes you. And if you can look at it, uh, it calms you down, uh, eyes close and, and sleep follows. Um, now, uh, the last one for the, for, the, uh, for the Capricorns with the Sag and the Twelfth House is painting of horses, foreign cultures in the bedroom. Uh, it can be image of travels, uh, that your own personal travels. It can be something, you know, uh, foreign land, just, you know, you don't have to even uh, having, uh, have to go there. But it, 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 something about faraway lands, foreign lands, foreign cultures, maybe in foreigners. But if you put, if you decide to put something of your own there, I would choose something that is more enjoyable for you. Nothing that brings, you know, like brings bad memories up as well. Like, oh my God, oh, this happened now I can't sleep and, you know, go into that and the mind starts running again. So make it something that is really enjoyable for you. Like I, you know, personally love horses, uh, would use, use that one as well. Um, yeah, I think, you know, this is strange. Uh, this position is a little bit strange as well because Sagittarius, guys, is the, is the, it's like fiery sign, so oh, fiery energy, it's a little bit like, can be a little bit more difficult. But the, the good side of this is, it's also the sign where we have easy access to. It's almost like we're, we've done something good, we've done something karmic, and now we have easy access to, you know, so it's it's a mixed mixed kind of like influence i would say the sagittarius in the 12th house uh, like uh, i want to maybe a short story here about jupiter in the 12th house because i had a couple of people actually with jupiter in the 12th house who had um, problems with sleep as well because now if we're if you're bringing in planets which i will guys will, will do in the volume two the astrologer special uh, i will bring in planets i will bring uh, degrees i will bring everything into it Jupiter expands as well and, and it expands sometimes the spiritual um, situations and Sagittarius can do the same. What I mean by spiritual situations, spiritual influences is dreams, a uh, lot of dreams. So sometimes you have so many dreams you can't even, you know, you can't even sleep or you have a lot of interaction with with um, spirits and, and, and you know um, prophecies and stuff like that so it's a mixed influence guys here and, and I think really that the meditation and, and the, the prayer and these types of grounding things even the sacred figures there these can really ground some of that energy that you're not constantly in in this um, prophetic prophetic situation now the Aquarius ascendant sun moon you're getting a great conversation and you've noticed Jupiter in the 12th house. Both my kids have Jupiter in the 12th house. And one thing that I saw, they sleep much better. Big beds. Jupiter is something big. Nice. So mm -hmm. I, they, since babies, sleep on their bed is bigger than our my bed with my husband. They're like uh, <laughs> uh, for, 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 for three people, huge beds. And they just roll around everywhere. They move a lot at night. They roll. They, 
they they need to sleep in every direction <laughs> every and i've seen this help so yeah guy i i i really love it yeah i really love it like big make something you know if you can make the bed big make it big if you can bring in jupiterian uh, sagittarian influences into it bring it in and make it work uh, like Lada did uh, beautifully i think here uh, okay uh, aquarius ascended sun moon ascended degree um you have capricorn in the 12th house now, again, it's, it's a little bit similar to the Libras, in my mind, who have that uh, Virgos in the 12th uh, house, but it's a little bit different. Now, what do we like here is introducing minimalism into the bedroom. Less is definitely better when you have Capricorn. Then everything should be organized. It's not always organized, but like, I really love if you even start the day with you know it's a simple thing to do make your bed put the things there it takes you five freaking minutes or even less to make the bed put the things away in an orderly manner in that way when you come into the bedroom later on it will be organized it will be clean you know like the capricorn actually likes the capricornian energy actually like the colder, if you can make the bedroom colder, you know, again, don't go too extreme here, but if you can make it a little bit colder, fresh air is always, you know, good for, for you know, most signs, but here, especially if you can make it a little bit colder, maybe you have the, you know, the fans or something that uh, bring the cold here, but it's important to, to have these things. And if you can make it colder, make it minimalist, make it organized, make it orderly. This is really important. With the pre-sleep routine, uh, it should be maintained, structured, organized. Um, you need to keep up with it. I really, really believe in this with the Capricornian energy and I've seen it work. But remember for you, it's a little bit difficult because you know a lot of the structured and organization is ruled by Capricorn. So it's kind of like hidden for, for you a tiny bit. So it's obviously it's easier in, in foreign lands, but not a lot of people can be in foreign lands. But you need to keep that in mind that it is a little bit harder for you and you need to still keep up with it. That will, way, you will, it will be a little bit, tiny bit easier. Keep up with the routines. Now, if you can get an hourglass, because this is a time, uh, it's, it's literally time. It, it, it represents time, Capricorn represents time. Or you, know, you can get old watch as well or, or a clock or something but make sure it doesn't make any noises <laughs> or big noises because you know in my you know family's this country house I, this is a bit of a funny story but we have a very kind of like old ancient kind of like family clock and, and, and it's it's a you know family heirloom and stuff like that i you know treasure it but it makes the biggest noise <laughs> it makes when it when it's a full hour or when it's the half hour so you know maybe keep keep that away uh, from the bedroom and make it you know make it something old make it represent time you know I, even in the book i have you know something something black you know um, because uh, capricorn leather and black is is a lot to do with capricorn and because it's old it's tried and tested but uh, in when i say these things be a little bit careful guys because minimalism remember minimalism because if you start uh, introducing too many objects into the capricorn energy or aquarius house it will get it will um it will have the opposite effect almost because it, it will get too uh, messy choose a couple of things and go with those yeah so declutter your bedroom That's Declutter. and then and i uh, my bedroom is the simplest of all with gray colors no art <laughs> But I always like it cold, like you said. But mm. I don't. I really like Capricorn qualities, like being organized. I never make up my bed. I'll learn to do that. <laughs> it, it will add an extra layer, definitely, because it, it will. If you go into it, it, it into bed, you will find it, you know, to the Capricornian energy, to your liking, almost, because it's the twelfth house. You're going into the twelfth house, and it's hard to do. I know it is. Uh, Maybe even a stone statue, something Capricornian, or even a picture of your grandparents or 
someone elderly you respect <laughs> something like that. I, I have a couple of more ones in the book is, you know, diplomas of your achievements as well, <laughs> like, or, or, or a mountain that you're climbing or something. This can be used as well, definitely, guys. Fantastic, guys. I mean, if you want a lot more and with pictures, it gives you suggestions how to make your uh, bedroom with the color scheme, with the ornaments. It's, I think it's a beautiful present to have or, or to give to someone or to have for you always check. Like it's so beautifully done. Yeah, guys, we, we really went uh, quite all in with the book, and I, I feel like there's there's you know a lot of simple suggestions there as well. Some of them are hard, you know. I even put uh, some some difficult ones there as well. But like, it's easy to do. There's images, there's mood boards that you can you know get ideas from as well. So uh, it's quite a quite a. I'm I'm really happy with the, with it <laughs> personally, obviously. But okay, so the the final uh, Pisces um, ascendant sun and moon or ace uh, ascendant degree. Now I just wanted to give a shout out as well to to Alice Alinari because some of the images you're you're seeing here are from uh, it's online on on, on Splash. Uh, she seems to be a very I don't know her personally. Uh, she just you know if you look at this image, you can see um, she I think. Uh, gets that at least very much the Pisces energy beautifully and I, as a Libra person myself I was really touched by the way she um, managed to get the Pisces energy here but a lot of those images other images are by her as well okay Pisces uh, Sun and Sun and Moon you have Aquarius in the 12th house now this is difficult I'm not going to, this is literally the most difficult ones uh, are Aquarius, Uranus, obviously Pluto uh, in the 12th house, but Aquarius and, and Uranus are really, really the ones uh, uh, that you, you, you might need to put more effort uh, and, and it's, it's disturbed at times your, your sleep as well. And um, when we're talking about, um, it's interesting, I've, I think I've made a mistake on this slide but I will, I will I will I will do it a little bit uh, different now when we're talking about uh, Aquarius energy in the 12th house we're talking about uh, space we're talking about astrological uh, influence etc uh, we need to really use these influence and put them into the bedroom because otherwise again the information downloads the in, uh, the, the knowledge the, the wisdom it's almost like you're downloading when you go into the bedroom you're downloading constantly the information from from these uh, areas and it, it can really disturb your sleep and this happened a lot in the test group and I've seen it happen a lot with uh, people around me as well so use the Aquarian energy bring in images of space itself uh, if possible, use the, the, um, the ceiling and paint it or maybe put some posters of space itself uh, into, into the, um, in, in, on the walls even. It can be on the walls, it doesn't have to be. I would be a little bit careful with astrological symbols. You know, maybe something like this, you know, literally if you see something like this, uh, on this like I have on the screen, like a, like a very um, died down, dimmed down, image of an Aquarian, uh, you know, a person, you can put that in there. But like, if, if, if you're putting in the Uranus symbol or Aquarius symbol, I would, you know, be a little bit careful uh, with it. But anything Aquarian. Uh, now, the, the, the tendency here for the Pisces is actually one of the downsides is the technology, because Aquarius is a lot to do with the technology as well. If you bring in or decide to bring in, you know, uh, phones, gadgets, technologies into the actual bedroom, have them at least, you know, Wi-Fi turned off, uh, airplane mode, all these things, because they will stimulate, you know, all the Wi-Fi's and stuff like that. They will um, stimulate you too much, unfortunately. So keep that in mind. Uh, also, good things to do. Like one of the things for an Aquarius, uh, or sorry, Pisces, Aquarius in the 12th house to do is to bring, uh, because the information is running. The, one of the things uh, that started really helping also uh, other people is uh, an information stream is coming. You need to write it down. Now, the, the, 
the balance between the gadgets and the technology and the Iranian energy is when you take the phone and put it to airplane mode, then it's kind of like the best of the both worlds and you can type it, you know, to type the consciousness stream into uh, the phone and then be done with it to get the information out it, then you're done. Um, I think that is one of the, that, that these are the most important ones. and. And in, in a little bit, the Aquarius in, in the 12th house needs to be kind of like almost accepting of the hecticness of the sleep as well. You can pull and bring in uh, the colors as well. I think colors are, are an easy way to do it as well for the Aquarian uh, in the 12th house. Like uh, darkish, bluish um, colors. Uh, you, can, you can see on this uh, even like this color on the screen is a little bit Aquarian. You can pull, uh, bring that in. Night sky, I already mentioned. If you're connected to space travel, space things, even like a, like a um, you know, it, it can be a kid's toy of a space shuttle or a rocket as well. And uh, even that can help uh, to ground that energy. But always, when we're talking about these things, these types of ornaments and stuff like that, it's important to put these in a place where you can actually see them when you fall asleep or even when maybe the first thing you glance at when you walk into the room. It's, it's also important to see it uh, and, and kind of like because everything in, around us is an energy. It, it, it has a certain type of energy. If you see it, you know, it, it grounds that, that, that Aquarian 12th house energy within you. And it helps you to fall asleep easier. <laughs> I think that's what I wanted to say, guys. And sorry for the slide. I think I left uh, the Capricorn here. Uh, my mistake. But listen to the sound, guys. Uh, don't look at this last slide in that way. Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, did you want to say something? I have just one more thing. You have to love this information. I have just one kind of like disclaimer, guys. It's It's like. Even if you do these things, even if you keep up with uh, routines and structures and, you know, like Lada shared some of the, uh, her stories from uh, her husband doing things and like restructuring and researching. Even if you do these things and you, uh, let's say, achieve success <laughs> with sleep, there are some like periods in life where it can be disturbed still. Eclipses. Eclipses is a, is a really potent time for energies and, 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 and you will get dreams, you will get information, stuff is happening outside of you, stuff is happening with your family, with yourself. It's, you know, the sleep can be disturbed there. Obviously, other periods like childbirth, having babies, you know, <laughs> my son, you know, sleeping in our, in our bed, it, you know, you a lot of knows this as well. It's, it's, it, it, it disturbs the sleep, you know, that are crying, etc. You know, be okay with these periods as well. Look for solutions, um, maybe, you know, naps, etc. that are, we talked about in this case as well, but be okay with some periods still being uh, quite intense. Uh, in life and sleep being disturbed. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> so much, Jim. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, if you're having long, hard transit, say, of the outer planets, like Pluto can be transiting in a 12th house for 14 years, or Uranus, or Neptune as well for 10, 12, 13 years, uh, would, would you be best to focus again on the sign in your 12th house, or on the energy of the planet, or...? <laughs> This is, you can use this guys as well for the planets because you know, every, those of you know already all the planets rule some house, let's say, you know, when we're talking about very specific Plutonian influence, use that the section where we, I talk about in the book or in this video about the, the Scorpionic energy uh, in the 12th house, use that, that will help a little bit. Obviously you, you can bring, bring in, let's say we're talking about Pluto, if you have Pluto transit, bring in the energy of Scorpio there. And, you know, uh, if you have the Uranus transit, I think Uranus is even uh, more difficult, actually. Bring in the, the, the um, Aquarius uh, side as well and start bringing in those elements and start bringing those things in. And my mom has a huge 12 house, if you use Placidus, and since Uranus entered there almost 15 years ago, it's been passing because it's like two signs. Of, yeah. She can't sleep. It's like so restless sleep. <laughs> Is she already like? 
like you know some people are maybe more aware that the information is coming away some knowledge is coming away the first thing i would do in that case because uranus in the 12th is it's bringing in something you know i have a really hard time to to let's say believe it's only you know person is restless because there's some sort of energy there's some sort of information and if they're at least a tiny bit aware of it they can okay okay i'm opening myself up to this because there's something the life the universe the energies are trying to tell me if you open yourself already up, then you can, okay, I'll write it down. Okay, how can I use it? This opens up a little bit, obviously. The, the, the Aquarius Uranus um, energies are quite difficult to handle. No doubt about it there. And I can imagine now people that have Gemini rising, uh, Mars, Uranus, and the North Node in the 12th house, they must be having Sun, or even strong Gemini Sun or Moon, they can be having disruptions to this heat these last few weeks. <laughs> I, I I tend to agree, and I think you know many people. One of the things that happens with a Mars, uh, let's give this. I think it's it's all important. Mars in the twelfth house, you know, tra by transits uh, innately, it can give even violent dreams as well, like aggressive, very you know these types of dreams. I've seen it so much, guys. It's it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and but well, like one of the things you do need to do is is you need to get that aggression out some way in during the day and i know you know again you know if i take you know say go to kickboxing go to sports it's something you have to do and you can't do it every day you have to you know you have to balance it you have to do it uh, at least even even like you know even small exercises during the summer go swim go swim it's still it's still physical exercise mm -hmm. you're moving your body and you're getting some of that aggression out obviously with the 12,000 if you can do like some sort of right now what is it Taurus if you can do yoga let's say in nature or hike in nature or these types of things during the day it's even better it's more exercise it's physical Thank you so much, Ian. I absolutely love this presentation. And if anyone wants to contact Lian for, per, for personal reading regarding their sleep and what to do, much more specific, he'll look at the planets, aspects there, or you can uh, get his book, um, PDF. It's an e-book. Uh, you'll download it immediately. I'll put a link below for both of his services or for the book to have, or to check up for your loved ones, for yourself. Uh, and as, as an educational tool as well. Thank you so much, Ian, and have a good sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, guys, wishing you a lot of good sleep. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.